Priests fathering invisible children. The UN wants action, but the Vatican keeps them secret. Join us now, our Rome correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, get us up to speed on this multifaceted problem. Brad, the United Nations has waded into this big time. In 2014, uh, it came out with a document where it pointedly told the Holy See to assess the numbers of children fathered by Catholic priests. These are priests who had not married, uh, were not married, priests according to the Western Rite. Uh, the Vatican ignored this document. Uh, the United Nations then came out directly against the Catholic Church in Ireland in 2016, making similar requests or putting forward similar directives and urging that children of priests should not be discriminated against in Ireland. Again, the Vatican seems to have ignored this. And now, in 2023, in February, uh, the UN again issued another directive to uh, the state of Ireland, to the Catholic Church there. And this has now been taken up in the Irish Parliament for discussion. Okay, let's roll back for the viewer here uh, 10 years, almost 10 years, to the UN report from 2014. Uh, specifically, two paragraphs, Jules, that you uh, pointed out this morning. The, uh, they're addressing the Vatican directly. Let's show these, uh, just show this to the audience there. You have the United Nations writing to the Vatican in 2014, uh, Convention on the uh, for children, the committee is concerned. This is paragraph 33 here in this in this directive to the Vatican. The committee is concerned about the situation of children fathered by Catholic priests who in many cases are not aware of the identity of their fathers. The committee, committee is also concerned that the mothers may obtain a plan for regular payment from the church until the child is financially independent only if they sign a confidentiality agreement not to disclose any information about the child's father or the plan. Let's roll back to the next paragraph here, the very next paragraph in this document. Paragraph 34 reads, the committee recommends that the Holy See, that's the Vatican, assess the number of children fathered by Catholic priests, find out who they are and take all necessary measures to ensure that the rights of those children to know and to be cared for by their fathers is respected as appropriate. The committee also recommends that the Holy See ensure that churches no longer impose confidentiality agreements as a condition to providing mothers with financial plans to support their children. Now, Jules, this was from 2014, directly calling out the Vatican in this UN report here. What has taken place since then? Very little, Brad. Uh, and I have this from the horse's mouth, from the son of a priest, uh, Vincent Doyle, a resident of Ireland who met Pope Francis in 2014, raised these issues with Pope Francis, Later, he met the UN, uh, uh, the the uh, commissioner, Vatican's uh, apostolic nuncio to the United Nations in Geneva, Archbishop Ivan Yurkovic, and Yurkovic showed him a secret document which uh, deals with, uh, or supposed to deal with, uh, the priests who have fathered children. Now, the irony here, and Doyle tells me this, is that the focus is on the priest, not on the welfare of these children, because tragically, and, and you know, others have told me that this is going to be a bombshell that will explode in the face of the Vatican, and it's going to be even a, an even bigger scandal than the sex abuse scandal we've been seeing in America, Ireland, and uh, many other parts of the world. Because now, uh, children who have been fathered by priests ha are empowered by DNA tests, and they know who their father is. They can prove who their father is. 
So uh, these guidelines, which were first issued by Pope Benedict in 2009, secret guidelines, have not yet been made public by the Vatican. Uh, when we contacted the Vatican, they simply said that, uh, well, you know, uh, uh, the, the guidelines were talked about in an interview uh, and with Andrea Tornelli and Beniamino Stella, the prefect for the Congregation of the Clergy. And if you want to know what those guidelines are, go and read the interview. That kind of sums up the, the guidelines. Okay, so let's. You also mentioned Ireland as a target for the UN, or uh, the UN actually kind of moving beyond. They're not getting anything done in the Vatican, so they move directly to the Church in Ireland. Can you mm -hmm. get us up to speed on that movement from the UN to Ireland? Uh, what they were urging and what Ireland has done, not done, and now is doing. Well, Ireland is responding, uh, you know, commendably. The Irish Bishops' Conference has a set of guidelines which they have made public on how they are dealing with priests who have father children uh, and, and, you know, what needs to be done for the welfare of these children. But uh, when uh, uh, these, uh, the, the UN report came out, uh, Vincent Doig, who is founder of Coping International, a body that deals with uh, children you know, who are fathered by priests, and he gets thousands of uh, requests every month from all over the world, from about 175 different countries, uh, uh, Vincent took this to his uh, parliament to his political representative, uh, representative, who is a member of the Irish Parliament, and she issued a parliamentary question to the Minister for Children. The Minister for Children then wrote to 17 uh, religious congregations, all male, of course, asking if they knew of uh, you know, priests who had fathered children uh, uh, within a particular time frame. He received absolutely no response. But Vincent Doyle's question is this, why did they not write to diocesan priests or Irish priests who may have fathered children in Africa or in Asia or in other parts of the world. Yeah, we have a, uh, just to catch the audience, uh, dial them in here. This is a, you know, these, these children are being fathered by priests. Many of them don't know who their fathers are. The, the mothers only receive financial assistance from the church to stay quiet if they do stay quiet. The children have, uh, are being raised in uh, complete, uh, unknown to the world, hidden from the world. How many priests, Jules, are involved in this worldwide? We're talking India, Africa, South America, Europe, even the United States. How many priests, do you have any idea how many priests are involved with this worldwide? Uh, Brad, we don't, we can't put our finger on a specific figure, but let's say it runs into the thousands, and you have, uh, you know, exposed the raw nerve of what is happening here, because not only in many cases do these children not know who their father is, or they are not told, obviously, but when they know who their father is and when they are told they have to spend their lives pretending you know to their mates that oh my father is a pilot my father you know is a spy and he's he's half the time in north korea so so i don't meet him and i can't introduce you to him so the child has to live a life of duplicity and embarrassment shame as to who his father really is now, as to uh, specific countries, uh, I've been uh, doing my research, looking at, uh, and again, a book recommended by Vincent Doyle, Shattered Lives by a, a former Dominican, David Rice. He points out in the 1970s, there was a court investigation conducted in the milit military ordinariat, and about 70 priests, seven zero priests, at that point were found to be having secret wives. This is the United States military ordinary, a very small group of priests, obviously. 80% of priests in Peru have wives and children, 60 to 70% in Brazil, 50% in the Philippines. Interestingly, uh, the wives, uh, you know, double up before the community as aunts or sisters, and the children of the priests uh, go as, uh, pose as his nephews or nieces, in Zaire, the number is 
100% in Sun Dioceses, and some of the priests have more than one wife because it's culturally acceptable. It's a sign of the priest's status. In Poland, uh, it's an open secret because if the priest then says he has a lover, he wants to marry her, he's immediately ostracized from the community. But if, he's, if they go on living this hidden life, Everything is fine. Everybody knows about it. His children can go to school and come back. But don't ask, don't tell is the Polish policy. Well, you can imagine how scandalized these children are, too, if your father was a cleric and how scandalized you would be against the priesthood and against the, uh, the Catholic Church itself and how that would endanger your salvation. Uh, what, uh, you know, Jules, even more horrific, March of last year, you were writing on an, uh, another horrific angle here about the abortion solution being chosen by clerics who father uh, children. Can you get our audience up to speed on that? This is even more abominable, Brad, because uh, Dr. Doris Reisinger, an academic, a former nun, who was raped by a priest uh, who was on the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, she's uh, done an academic paper. There are other academic papers to demonstrate that there is a significant number of priests who are having their children aborted. And that is probably the biggest tragedy in the Catholic Church today. Okay, one final question, uh, Jules. What is the solution that is coming from Pope Francis and also basically from the late Benedict the Sixteenth himself? Again, a very good question, Brad. Uh, Pope Francis, in his book, uh, Benedict the Sixteenth, you know, was the one responsible for these guidelines. But Pope Francis, uh, when he was Archbishop Bergoglio of Buenos Aires, uh, he wrote a book with Abraham Skorka, a Jewish rabbi. And in that book, he very clearly says, if a priest tells me that he's made somebody pregnant, uh, I ask him, you know, I, I ask him to leave the priesthood and to take care of the child. He says it, he, he's not too concerned about whether the priest marries the woman or no, but it's imperative that the priest leaves the priesthood to take care and be a father to his child. Uh, the... Uh, Pope said, Pope Francis said very interestingly that he believes a natural law comes even before the priest's ministerial obligations. Uh, but uh, when I was talking to traditionalist Catholic leaders, they say exactly the opposite. They say on no grounds must a priest who fathers a child be asked to leave the priesthood because, you know, a priest is forever, and uh, the salvation of the of souls depends on his priesthood, so he should probably be sent away uh, somewhere else. And the church should be asked to take care of the children. Now, this is a very interesting and a very different take on what Pope Francis and the Vatican currently advocate and believe. Okay, well, we also turn the audience to our uh, more of your reporting they can find on Church Milton's site. And we also ask uh, our audience to keep in prayer all of these children fathered by clerics that they may lead normal lives someday and not be so uh, understandably uh, scandalized against the priesthood and the Catholic Church and, and someday obtain salvation, which is the goal of us all. Jules, thanks for your reporting on this monumental problem. Thank you, Brad.